Okay, I'm Andre Shah. I'm the chairman of Europa Homo, which is the European Prostate Coalition. We have members in 28 countries all over Europe. Professionally, I'm a chemical engineer and master in business. Survival of prostate cancer, diagnosed 50 years old, and I received at the time a prostatectomy. Well, the idea of the study was to investigate the quality of life of prostate cancer patients after treatment. We used validated questionnaires, which are very similar to the ones used in clinical studies. The new thing is it's patient initiated and designed, so no involvement of healthcare professionals. It's the first study ever from patients for patients. In most of all the other QL studies that we have seen, they are related to clinical studies as secondary endpoints, and ours is an observational study. We received 3,000 respondents, which is 0.1% of the patient population in Europe, out of 24 countries. Yeah, well, before we started the study, we had a buy-in of all our members and we asked them how to perform the study. We provided a web link to all our member organizations or website, a newsletter, other websites. The link was available in 19 languages so that everybody could uh, use their own mother tongue. The survey was maximum 20 minutes, it was voluntary. And yes, there is a slight bias uh, in doing this. Uh, we had 59% uh, of the respondents who had a higher education and 54% had managerial functions. And there were less answers from the South and Eastern Europe. Well, first of all, I think the setup of the study was uh, different. It's a random choice of patients who are answering voluntary. And in clinical environments, you most of the cases have selected groups of, of patients, mostly in cancer centers or big hospitals. Most of the questions in clinical studies are answered in presence of healthcare professionals which could give a bias to the most wanted answers. And the last point is our outcomes average five years after treatment. So the full effect of the side effects are there and there is no longer a bias of first cure. Well, that's a good question. I mean, the way we have collected the results is different from those in clinical studies. So there is that open question, is this valid for any result in clinical studies? We have already initiated a modeling e exercise to compare our results uh, with general pu public results, but the details are not validated yet. There is for sure a big impact, as you can see, that 82% of our patients are still living with a partner. In the study design, we wanted to measure this impact, but we could not find any validated questionnaires for partners, so we decided to not do that at this moment in time. The biggest impact on your quality of life is when you cannot do today what you have planned to do today or could do before today. And that is for sure valid and has a big impact on the partners of all patients. Think on fatigue and insomnia. The restrictions in movement and visits when your partner is incontinent or less continent than he was before. And the impact on your sexual life is 
big because it is impacting your partner as much as yourself. So there need to be a rethink of the intimacy between partners. So it's a big impact. I can maybe illustrate that by a quote that I had from a partner of a prostate cancer patient uh, in a metastatic phase. She said to me, when your partner has metastatic prostate cancer, you walk together on a downward slope. 